Hello viewers, welcome to online classes at day 10. Uh, whatever we completed in this topic, let us recapitulate them. So, last class we finished about uh, digestive glands among them. We discussed about extra elementary digestive glands, namely salivary glands, liver, pancreas, their secretions and composition we completed. And next, uh, intra elementary canal digestive glands. The intra elementary canal digestive glands, namely gastric glands, Brunner gland, and succus entericus glands, intestinal glands, and their secretions and the secretions composition completed in last class. Now we are going to discuss about physiology of digestion, mechanism of digestion. So the individuals consumes food, such food contain macronutrients. Macronutrients are nothing but the complex of food molecule. The macronutrients present in the food are complex food molecule. They are polymers and uh, such polymer macronutrients never absorbed and utilized our body directly without digestion why because their molecular size larger in size that's why they unable to absorb into blood across the one of cards so compulsory the digestion is required for their absorption what happens in digestion process in the digestion process the complex food molecule, the complex biomolecule undergoes breakdown. The breakdown of complex biomolecule into simple absorptive substances called digestion. So it is a catabolic process and hydrolytic process in which the complex food molecules break down into simple absorptive molecule. Followed? So that is uh, digestion. Already we discussed definition of digestion in earlier classes. And it is a hydrolytic process, remember. And these are the macronutrients of our food, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids. Yes. The digestion of macronutrients results what? After completion digestion of all these macronutrients, what happens? Whatever polymers are present in that macronutrients, after completion their digestion, we observe the carbohydrates after completion their digestion, the glucose monomers to be produced. Carbohydrate is a polymer molecule, larger molecule. After after completion their digestion it become as glucose right next in the same way the proteins involved in digestion and produce the monomers amino acids next uh, the lipids involved in digestion and produce the monomers fatty acids and glycerol and next nucleic acids produce nitrogen bases ribose sugar and phosphate so all these are ultimate molecules ultimate products after completion digestion right right so if we observe the sequence of digestion protocol of digestion it includes uh, various phases there are sequently first phase is ingestion and uh, then digestion in buccal cavity and swallowing or deglutition and peristalsis of bolus, digestion in stomach and digestion in small intestine and absorption of digested material and assimilation and last final phase is defecation. All these are series of events that to be occur in, during mechanism of digestion, physiology of digestion. Okay, let's sequently discuss about all these events right right the first event is ingestion what is ingestion ingestion is nothing but a simple thing intake of food into oral cavity so that is ingestion 
now after ingestion the digestion first starts takes place in our oral cavity in buccal cavity this is the first step in which the mechanical digestion takes place as well as chemical digestion takes place so the mechanical digestion mediated by teeth and tongue with the help of teeth we masticate the food material the tongue supports that process so the mastication mediated by teeth and tongue during this time the food material mix up with the digestive juice that is saliva the salivary glands pose the saliva into oral cavity at the time of mastication the taste buds of tongue taste the uh, taste uh, sensitize the taste of the food material then immediately uh, the salivary glands pose the saliva into oral cavity so in this core the saliva mix up the food thoroughly and ultimately uh, it lead to chemical digestion so if we observe the chemical digestion in oral cavity the salivary glands release saliva the contents of saliva you observe water and mucus present and uh, salivary amylase present you also called tialin and electrolytes and thiocyanate lysogyme enzyme also present let's observe action of saliva so first uh, carbohydrates the carbohydrates reacted with whatever starch like the carbohydrates present in our food the carbohydrates reacted with the tialin enzyme it is also called salivary amylase enzyme the salivary amylase enzyme hydrolyzes the carbohydrates as disaccharides namely maltose sugar otherwise dextrins so this is the first digestive event that occur in our oral cavity and uh, other thiocyanate and as well as lysogyme or antimicrobial agents they kills the microorganisms present in our food 30 percent of starch to be hydrolyzed in our buccal cavity you remember and uh, other contents of our food proteins lipids all these called nucleic acid never undergoes change in oral cavity so only the starch digestion only carbohydrates partly digestion takes place in oral cavity with the action of saliva all right, right. next uh, uh, after chemical digestion with saliva the produced content the masticated food particles together called bolus bolus to be produced it to be lead swallowing deglutition what is following what is deglutition deglutition is process in which the bolus pushed into esophagus through pharynx so that is swallowing followed so bolus pushed into esophagus through pharynx that is deglutition or swallowing so it is uh, mediated by swallowing center that seated in medulla oblongata and lower pons you remember these two centers regulate the swallowing process and deglutition process you observe this visual in what manner the swallowing going on this is a deglutition mechanism swallowing mechanism mediated by these two neural centers and next to the event is peristalsis of bolus whatever bolus produced whatever bolus swallowed into esophagus now it lead into peristalsis what is peristalsis along the esophagus along the wall of the esophagus whatever circulatory muscles longitudinal muscles are present uh, due to the uh, due to their contraction systematic contraction results the wave like movements along the esophagus so the wave like movements to be extended along the esophagus 
such wave like movements mediates the peristalsis of bolus now the bolus pushed into stomach through esophagus by involuntary muscular movements you observe this visual in what way the bolus uh, discharged into stomach during this time the cardia opens and bolus dropped into stomach so that is the ultimate change by the peristalsis of bolus next uh, now we are going to discuss the digestion in the stomach so after completion oral cavity the next phase extended into stomach now the bolus dropped into stomach here in the food uh, stomach the food undergoes both mechanical digestion and chemical digestion so the mechanical digestion in stomach mediated by churning movements already we discussed the wall of stomach additionally contain uh, oblique muscle layer so that oblique muscle layer circular and lanthanal muscle layer propagate the churning movements so the churning movements you observe this visual in what way the churning movements extended clearly the stomach showing the churning movements like this follow it right next uh, the you, in this process the bolus completely mix up with gastric juice in stomach and uh, it leads to chemical digestion so in the stomach by by the activation of hormones the gastric glands activated and produce the gastric juice into lumen of the stomach now the food mixes with gastric juice now we are going to discuss about action of gastric juice what are the contents present in gastric juice already we learned the ph is uh, 1.8 2.5 the water and mucus hcl proreneine and pepsinogen and casual intrinsic factor are present so first uh, whatever hcl present in gastric juice that turns the bolus into acidic medium so immediately the bolus turn into acidic state the hcl turns bolus into acidic medium remember after that the hcl kills the microorganism whatever microorganism bacteria like that like that microbes are present in our food that to be killed uh, by the action of hcl and the hcl activates the proenzymes the gastric juice mostly contain proenzymes they are inactive state they are proreneine and pepsinogen so all these inactive enzymes are activated with the action of hcl followed right and hcl also softens the food material and dissolves cement material that present between the cells that consumed by us right next uh, the regulates opening and closing of pylorus and as well as salivary amylase action also stops the salivary amylase action so all these are the changes that mediated by the hcl hcl turns the bolus into acidic state and kills microbes and activates proenzymes and softens the food and dissolves the cement material that present between the cells of tissues and regulates opening and closing of pylorus and as well as stops the action of salivary amylase in the stomach so all these are all the changes mediated by the hcl of gastric juice next uh, the further uh, event you observe the activation of pro enzymes that present in the gastric juice so the hcl mainly converts the inactive enzymes the acts on inactive enzymes you observe one enzyme proreneine it is inactive form enzyme so the hcl acts on proreneine and uh, converts it as renin which is active form so now the, the inactive enzyme turn into active form now it is eligible for 
a hydrolyzed process or followed in the same manner you observe and one more enzyme pepsinogen it is also inactive enzyme this inactive enzyme with the action of HCl it turn as active enzyme that is pepsin so proranin become as a renin and pepsinogen become as pepsin followed so proranin and pepsinogen are inactive enzymes and renin and pepsin are active enzymes right next uh, one more event to be occur that is autocatalysis what is autocatalysis whatever enzyme pepsin produce that pepsin itself acts on pepsinogen you observe pepsin enzyme produce with the action of hcl so the now the pepsin enzyme itself acts on pepsinogen so acts on pepsinogen and converts it as active form pepsin so that phenomena is called autocatalysis so the autocatalysis served by pepsin the active pepsin again acts on inactive pepsinogen and turns it as pepsin that is autocatalysis followed right next uh, now the activated enzymes involved in hydrolytic process in digestion process so whatever uh, milk protein present in our food that milk protein is called casein so now the enzyme renin the activated enzyme renin hydrolyzes the milk protein casein as para casein remember very very important so the casein hydrolyzed as para casein followed next uh, this para casein Re on the, in the presence of calcium plus trion, this para casein turns as digested as para caseinate, calcium para caseinate, it also called curd. So, the milk protein coagulated as calcium para caseinate with the action of renin enzyme under presence of calcium plus trions. In the same manner, you observe one more activated enzyme that is pepsin it acts on proteins and calcium paracasinate so that pepsin hydrolyzes the proteins and calcium paracasinate as proteoses so the first level is proteoses then the proteoses again involved in digestion with pepsin and they produce peptones followed so the proteins break down at first level as proteoses the next level is peptones so right so uh, with the action of renin calcium paracasinate produce with the action of pepsin ultimately proteoses peptones produce that is uh, action of gastric juice and next uh, with the action of gastric juice what happened the bolus turned into acidic state chyme the partly digested acidic state food present in stomach called chyme followed so here you observe um, in chyme Partly digested proteins are present, partly digested carbohydrates are present. Right. Next, uh, the proteins uh, partly digested. Right. Now, we are going to discuss the digestion in this small intestine. So, peristaltic movements that facilitate mixing of food with the digestive juice in small intestine after completion digestion the food material approximately four to five or four hours remains in the stomach after completion partly digestion uh, the chyme gradually discharges into small intestine by opening of the pylorus and after that they moved into small intestine 
so when they dropped into small intestine the peristaltic movements facilitated the mixing of food with digest why because when chyme dropped into small intestine at a time three kinds of digestive juices are released into small intestine what are they first one bile juice the liver releases bile juice stores in gall bladder on contraction of gall bladder the bile juice discharges into small intestine in the same manner pancreatic juice also release from pancreas and intestinal juice release from succus enteric gland scripts of liver cone so all these three digestive juices mixes with food and the partly digested chyme undergoes now complete digestion so now with the mix, by mixing these digestive juices the chyme turns into alkaline state the food mixes three digestive juices in small intestine bile juice pancreatic juice and intestinal juice and uh, their composition let's we observe the bile juice contain bile pigments and uh, bile salts no enzymes are present the pancreatic juice contain trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen pro carboxypeptidase amylase and salivary lipase it is also called steaxin and the uh, intestinal juice contain enterokinase it is a enzyme activator and amino peptidase tripeptidase and dipeptidase and next uh, lipases and as well as saccharidase enzyme all these are enzymes of the intestinal juice already all these things we learned in last class and uh, let's see the mechanism of digestion in small intestine in small intestine first we'll observe digestion of proteins what manner the proteins are break down into simple molecules liquefied molecule you observe this is the series of events occurred during the digestion of protein it is a large molecule a polymer protein after um, involving digestion such protein molecule break down next level is proteose peptone and polypeptide you observe this visual and this polypeptide so the protein molecule this is like you observe this is protein and the protein molecule going to break down as polypeptide like this so simple form next uh, the polypeptide involved in digestion and uh, going to produce tripeptide like this only three amino acids are present tripeptide and tripeptide involved in digestion and produce dipeptide so it include only two amino acids you observe which one dipeptide next dipeptide involved in digestion and ultimately produce amino acid so in that way the protein molecule involved in digestion and ultimately produce amino acid sequentially right next in the small intestine first activation of pro enzymes takes place so the pancreatic juice contain various kinds of inactive enzymes namely trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen such enzymes undergoes activation for that purpose one enzyme activator is present in intestinal juice that enzyme activator is enterokinase that enterokinase acts on trypsinogen and converts it as active trypsin so the inactive trypsinogen turn as active trypsin enzyme now the chymotrypsinogen also turns as active chymotrypsin with the action of trypsin so the active enzymes now produce they are trypsin and chymotrypsin follow so in the same manner whatever autocatalysis process occur in stomach the same autocatalysis event also occur in small intestine let's we observe autocatalysis in small intestine the active form of trypsin again itself acts on trypsinogen and converts it as active trypsin follow so this is autocatalysis so the same phenomenon in stomach occur and as well as in small intestine also occur 
autocatalysis right next uh, after formation active enzymes they involve in hydrolysis process now whatever proteins and proteoses peptones present in the chyme now they undergoes hydrolysis process with proteases the pancreatic juice contain active trypsin and chymotrypsin these are endopeptidase enzymes they break down the internal peptide bonds of the uh, polymers of proteins proteoses peptones and uh, ultimately they give rise polypeptides so next uh, these polypeptides again involved in hydrolysis process by carboxypeptidase enzyme of pancreatic juice and amino peptidase enzyme of intestinal juice these two enzymes are belongs to different digestive juices but these are exopeptidases they break down the terminal peptide bonds the carboxypeptidase break down the peptide bond of carboxylic acid terminal amino peptidase Uh, break down the peptide bond of amino terminal so they break down the terminal peptide bond and produce the simple molecule tripeptides and uh, um, besides that amino acids also separated now the tripeptide involved in hydrolysis process with the action of tripeptidase enzyme of intestinal juice and it break down the tripeptides ice amino acid one amino acid is produced and dipeptide is produced now the dipeptide involved in hydrolysis process with dipeptidase enzyme and ultimately yields amino acid so in that way the larger protein molecule uh, sequentially undergoes breakdown and ultimately produce simple absorptive monomer that is amino acid with this we complete a digestion of proteins so the proteins first time the proteins underwent a digestion in stomach they are partly and here in small intestine they completely in um, completely invent digestion right <coughs> right next uh, one another content of our food material that is lipid digestion of lipids so mainly the fats lipids undergoes the first event emulsification emulsification of fats with bile salts the bile juice contain bile salts you observe this visual in this visual larger size fat globule is present now these fat go droplet fat globules Uh, reacts with uh, bile salts and uh, undergoes emulsification breakdown and become as hydrophilic previously they are hydrophobic now it become as hydrophilic by which the enzymes to be acts with this emulsified fat droplets right next uh, after completion emulsification the emulsified lipids undergoes a hydrolysis process with pancreatic lipase enzyme and intestinal lipase enzyme with the action of lipase enzyme the emulsified lipids at first step the yields diglycerides they produce diglycerides now the diglycerides again involves in digestion and produce monoglycerides the monoglycerides again involved in digestion with lipase enzyme and ultimately produce a simple monomers they are fatty acids and glycerol so lipids also undergoes digestion as three steps the first phase is emulsification and next phase is hydrolysis process in hydrolysis process the lipids at first they produce diglycerides then monoglycerides the monoglycerides ultimately produce what fatty acids and glycerol so with this we completed digestion of lipids right next uh, 
digestion of carbohydrates so carbohydrates polymers star like that so the carbohydrates undergoes digestion and ultimately produce glucose monomer partly carbohydrates digested in oral cavity dextins are produced the remaining undigested carbohydrates let us involve in digestion in our small intestine uh, in our small intestine the pancreatic juice contain amylase enzyme that amylase enzyme acts on carbohydrates and break down it as disaccharides otherwise dextrins disaccharides are simple sugar than carbohydrates like uh, sucrose maltose lactose they contain only two units now these disaccharides for example maltose it is a disaccharide now this maltose reacted with saccharidases enzymes brush border enzymes that secreted by the cells of the villi of uh, intestine so these brush border enzymes are called saccharidases various kinds of brush border enzymes are present in succus enterica juice so you observe this is maltase enzyme the maltase enzyme acts on maltose and uh, break down it as glucose to glucose molecules produced in the same manner one more disaccharide sucrose reacted with sucrase enzyme sucrase break down the sucrose eyes what glucose and fructose next uh, one more saccharidase that is a lactase enzyme break down the lactose eyes glucose and galactose glucose and galactose so um, all these are monomers so with this carbohydrate digestion completed after completion carbohydrate digestion ultimately glucose molecule and monomers are produced right next uh, we are going to discuss digestion of nucleic acids so whatever uh, food that we consumed in our daily life that also contains cells tissues okay in that cells nucleic acids remains dna rna so that nucleic acids also break down so in the uh, pancreatic juice nuclease enzymes are present dna as rna as enzymes are present the dna as rna as enzymes acts on nucleic acid and break down them as first nucleotides now these nucleotides involved in hydrolysis process with the nucleotidase enzyme of intestinal juice that break down it as nucleosides and phosphate and next uh, the nucleosidase enzyme of intestinal juice reacts on nucleoside and break down it as ribose sugar it is pentose sugar and nitrogen base all of it so with this we completed uh, digestion of nucleic acid so the completely digested food here in small intestine all macro nutrients all macro nutrients uh, completely uh, underwent digestion carbohydrates proteins nucleic acids lipids everything digested so the completely digested alkaline state food called chyle so in stomach we termed incompletely partly digested food that is chyme here we uh, term as what chyle it is completely digested let us observe what is the difference between chyme and chyle ask in short answer question so chyme is partly digested as strict state food of stomach and chyle is completely digested alkaline state food that present in intestine so with this uh, we completed mechanism of digestion in next class we will discuss subsequent events of the uh, physiology of digestion right, thank you